Awesome. Welcome everybody to our New Zealand training. If you don't know me, my name is Bridget and it is the 8th of April. Oh my goodness, it's gone so fast. Here's Sophia, say hi. Me and Tony are going to be taking your training tonight and I just wanted to share with you at the beginning all the exciting stuff that's happening this month, all these things that we've got in our tool belts for April, because of course now we're in the lead up to conference, which is like 70 days away. Oh, I can't believe it's only 70 days. I'm super excited. So I wanted to get you guys all pumped and make sure that you realize what's available because the head office has put on so many cool promotions and things and tools for us to use. But first, I'm just going to share a little quick video that I'm sure lots of you have seen before, but it's just the conference video. I think it was from Melbourne, actually, but it's just going to get you all excited and in the mood to listen to all the really cool things that we've got available for us this month. So me, I do my technical thing that I'm not very good at and share screen. <laughs> share down. Here we go. Oh, not that page. And if you can just give me a thumbs up, if you can hear it. Yep. Leave your title at the door. Leave your story about why this couldn't be for you at the door. Success doesn't come for free, but the cost of stepping outside your comfort zone and leaning into your fears is so worth it. With persistence comes success. You are fiercely capable. You're inspiring. I made a decision that I was going to make this thing work. This is what this business does. Like she was alive, she was lit up, she had a chance to be herself and be free. I want you to leave something behind that's not serving you. The belief, whatever that is that holds you back. The magic is in the journey there. So make that decision to go all in and throw everything you've got at it. It is the character that I was able to build within myself on this journey. It's the character that I built when I wanted to give up so badly, but I knew that I, I wouldn't have been moving forward in my life and in my income if I did. And that's when things started to change because my belief in me began to change. I learned to get laser obsessed with that vision of where I was going rather than where I was in that moment. Not many people know it, but I think the people in this room, not only did they change my life, but they saved my life. Drop from your headspace into your heart space with conscious intention. When it gets hard, dig deeper. Don't give up. Who are you going to lean towards, look upon and say, you know what, I want to emulate the qualities that are within them and, in, and take them on for myself. Qualities that you see in that individual are inside you too. Find a way to do this business that feels right to you. It's not a one size fits all. You just have to say, I am persistent. I've got what it takes. I know I'm enough. I know I'm worthy. That whole time I knew I had something in my hands. If I'd actually just used it and did the work, it would have given me everything that I wanted. What could life look like if you're in a position to own your own day and own your own time? You're here for a reason. You're guided to be here. And out there are so many people that are your people. It has been that wonderful for us and our family. If my business totally fell over, I still wouldn't leave. Make a new decision about who you are going to be from this day forward. So I want you to dance like a million people are watching today and absolutely do not give a damn. Be so out loud and proud about everything that we are that no one is going to judge you. They're going to admire you. Success comes to those who make the desire and the definite goal that whatever it is that they want is going to occur no matter what.
So I want to know in the comments who has been to an Australian conference, not just a Kiwi conference, but that big Aussie conference. Pop a one in the, in the comments if you've been to one before. Cool. And if you haven't been, maybe pop a two in the comments. If you're going, even if you're not going or you're going this time, it's going to be your first time because there's such. Are you going to hear us go on and on and on about it in the next two months? But there's something magical about being at conference, and you might have heard them all say that it's a decision. It's a, you make it's a decision to be successful. You know, it's just about um, making sure that you're going to do it no matter what and not letting the bullshit get in the way. And you just um, I don't know how to describe it. Like watching that, I just feel so excited. Like it just lights me up. And if you have never been in that room, you won't understand until you get there. But you'll get there at first. Going to think everybody's freaking crazy, and they're all dancing on their chairs and screaming and shouting. But you're going to cry so much. Oh my god, so many people haven't been to one yet. It's going to be so many tears. There's going to be so much laughter. And tonight, I really just want to share. The really the things that we've got available for us to get us to conference because I think some people might still be on the seat around I don't know if I can afford it can I go but that's why head office has put on all these really cool promotions because that is still so so possible for you to get there and to pay for yourself to get there so and then Tony's going to talk into a little bit about goal setting a bit later on so in April First of all, if you're just new, new here and you're only a partner, you know, and you're going to get to Partner Plus, that's a $150 bonus. You can teach somebody else to do that. And then the head office is going to give you a $50 bonus between April and May. So anytime between April and May, if you're a partner, that is just your order plus two more orders, and that's Partner Plus. Do it in 10 days. It's a $150 bonus. Do it in 30 days, and you've got a $100 bonus teach someone else to do it and you've got a $50 bonus. So that's, you know, $200 available to you there. And the one that I think is we should all be trying to do before we get to conference is the re-promote to SP. So if you've been here before, this is something that the head office do quite often, but it's such a cool promotion because you can either teach somebody to do, to get to senior partner between you and them, you can do 3,900 points if you're already a senior partner, you can do that yourself, 3,900 points. And literally, it, what that looks like is eight and a half fruit, veg and berry orders. That's all. So it, that's between you and somebody else. So you grab four orders, teach your team to grab four orders, and that's your 3,900 points. So if you break it down like that, it's totally achievable, especially over two months. And the other thing is, it's not just that. It's not just if you're going to promote to senior partner you're going to get a $300 bonus if you teach someone to do that that's a $300 bonus for you plus the retail sales profit which I love which often we don't talk about if you're only a partner and you manage to do this apart from your partner plus bonus that you're going to get and your senior partner bonus that you're going to get you're going to put in another $390 in retail sales profit if you're at that 10% if you're at Partner Plus, you're going to put in another $585 of retail sales profit. And if you're at Senior Partner already and you're teaching someone else to do it, that's $780 in retail sales profit. So have you looked at it like that yet? Have you looked at it and thought that that re-promote to Senior Partner is not only going to get me that, get me in the room with the CEO, Travis, and Jeff Roberti, which I'm sorry if you're not all racing to get on a seat with Jeff Roberti, <laughs> then you need to. <laughs> but from that you've got look at all the money that you could be leaving on the table and that is going to be that could pay for your conference ticket it can pay for your flights to get there so I think we just need to be thinking about it a little bit more um, as Adam Westbrook would think about it I guess and break it down into the pay plan and how it can help us and if you've got if you're new here and you don't understand how that works reach up to your upline reach to your sidelines and say hey look what is available to me here? I really want to get a conference, but I don't have the money right now. What do I need to do to get that money to put get on that flight to get to Brisbane, to get in the room with Jeff Roberti? Because that's what we're here for, you know? And that's what at every level we should be doing, breaking everything back down. Like, where do I want to be at the in June? When I, where do I want to cross that stage at June? And what do I need to get there and work backwards? So... 
I did this with Fee today and she's made me, I thought that I'd mapped everything out. I knew like who needed to promote to what, what I to get, what I needed to do, how many orders, but she made me break it down even more to the fact, you know, like every single order and where it needed to come from. And I guess depending on how big your goal is, it will be how much you have to map out. But I want you to be able to look at that and say, cool, Ng is going to need to get five more orders to get here. And then she's going to help that team get 10 more orders to get there. And then that's going to put me there, you know. So you can have that on your wall and tick it off as you go. And this is how much money I'm going to get in bonuses. And this is how much money I'm going to get in retail sales profit. So get really, really clear. So we've got our partner plus teacher um, promotion. We've got our read to promote to SP to get in that room with Jeff Roberti and Travis, which would just be unbelievable. And he is going to be on training tonight if you're still awake. Otherwise, you can get that recording. And then we've got our Juice Plus Wellness app that started back up, which is really exciting. So um, Alex and me and Rach did <laughs> whatever the, the last one. <laughs> Rach is probably better at it um, explaining this than me because she's very good at this app. <laughs> but if you haven't done the 10-day trial yet, you can still jump on and do the 10-day trial. If you've done it already, you do need to pay the $25 a month. But at, at the moment, we've got our, our 10 days to jump on and then I'm taking it, they've released, I didn't watch the thing, but they've released it, it's coming to our PayPal, right, Alex? Oh, Okay. <laughs> I should have watched the live before I said that. <laughs> Lucky Celine's not here. Anyway, you didn't hear that from me, but you should be getting really into the app because there's lots of exciting things coming up. <laughs> and it will, <laughs> it will make it worthwhile for you. <laughs> and it's another tool that you can give your customers, obviously. No, I don't think they have. I think it's just I've known about it for a while. I thought they'd told everybody. Um it's just another tool to give customers. Now, I know we have these beautiful programs that we all use, but so many of us get so caught up. I know I do personally with what I'm doing during the day. I often don't get to the gym, and a lot of a lot of my customers might be the same. So to have that opportunity to work out from home, your customers are going to get better results. They're going to love the products more. They're going to stay around. It's going to be better from everyone. <laughs> okay. No one heard anything. Okay. <laughs> um. And then the other thing that we have is obviously it's Nick Egan's 60th birthday and we're doing 60 events in 60 days and they've got some really cool prizes up. So everyone should be gunning to have these live events. You're going to get people excited, new teamies, new customers, show your new teamies how it's done. There's, when we had our uh, Road to NMD tour in New Zealand, there's something special about being at a live event, you know, like it does just make such a huge difference. And the people that we got along to that event signed up, you know, like there's, there is, I don't know, it's so different than watching something on a Zoom. Like I bet you like half the time they're watching the TV while they're watching the recording and they're not really there. But when you're in an event and you're alive, you're focused, you're concentrating, you can feel the energy in the room and you can feel what, how people, um, their stories and it just translates so much better. Sorry, I'm just going to change something here because. Sorry. It's better. So, there's some really cool prizes up. There's like a $600 travel voucher, is one of the prizes. And then we've got, um, uh, I think there's, there's conference tickets, there's really cool uh, coaching calls, there's a whole lot of awesome stuff. So, all you have to do is decide to do an event with your teamies. Um, they can be sideline bunnies. They don't have to be your direct downline or, or upline or whatever. Whoever's in your area, find out where they are, what they're doing. And the event can be something simple. Like the other day we did a wellness walk. No one came but we with our team, but we, we did invite people. And so the idea was to walk around the mount, have a chat, and then we sat and made, we made some complete smoothies and shakers and sat on the beach afterwards. You know, you could do an evening when – um, Fee was here where you did like an evening went to a restaurant and just had a um, women's circle kind of chat talked about health and wellness and, and hormones and all those exciting things um, you could have 
an event in your house and bring people along and cook some of the recipes from the programs. You know, it doesn't have to be extravagant. It doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. It could be a coffee catch up with the girls in the afternoon, you know. So all you have to do is register your event. There's a link on the Facebook page. And awesome, you're doing some Auckland and Hamilton. And then take some pictures and then hashtag 60 events in 60 days. And I would recommend to ta also tag JP Australia um, page. And you've gone the draw to win awesome prizes. So let's all get on the band bandwagon because before COVID, we did so many live events and it was so different. And so I think the idea is just to bring all that back. So these are all the exciting things that are available to you guys. Um, does anyone have any questions? around what what's available this month around the re-promote or the partner plus um, teacher award or anything like that or what they need to get there <laughs> you guys all feel comfortable with those things and just sharing them with your teamies no yeah maybe um that's all right Alex <laughs> apart from the slip up um so yes I guess then that now it comes down to looking at what's available and then like we talked about mapping out your goals saying right this is where I want to be at conference this is where I want to you know set my standard for and if it sounds crazy like does anyone have a goal maybe write down in the comments what your what your aim is to be at conference in the middle of June how would you like to walk the stage as Rach QSSC, Tony SSC, Yona SC. Awesome. SC or more. Yay, this is exciting. And also, please don't ever look at anyone else's goal and think, oh, mine should be bigger or mine's not good enough. Like it is literally, it's, this is your business, Joe, three club. Yeah, Joe. QNMD. Is that, is that Pauline? Why isn't your name on there, Pauline? <laughs> so, and now, my yes, it was. Sorry. <laughs> <it is. laughs> so now, my my homework for you guys is: Do you know what it takes to get there? So you've got these. Have you reverse engineered that goal? Do you know how many promotions in your team need to happen to get there? Do you know what your pay line needs to be? Do you know how many orders you need to get your pay line for that? Um, and so we're not going to go over it tonight because it will take a long time to go over it with all of you. But if you don't understand how to break it down, then please reach out to your uplines, your sidelines, um, anyone, you know, if you don't have an upline, reach sideline or reach out to me and I can push you in the right direction. <laughs> and um, yeah, like, cause now we've got 70 days. This is the time to be making sure we've got it really clear. And so we can make sure that those goals, all of those goals there are going to happen and I'm going to hold you all to it. <laughs> um. On that note, I think I would like to pass it over to Pony and she's going to talk a little bit more into goal setting and some other fundamentals. I'm just going to, um, it's pretty cool. Where's my face gone? And thank you for myself. offering to share training tonight. Um, right. As everyone knows, I always just think, on my feet for training but it was nice to be able to share it with someone and Alex I know what you're talking about like I decided I was going to have a shower before I did this because my hair's always naturally frizzy and then I ran out of time and I was like well they're just going to get the frizzy version of me so oh well <laughs> um kia ora everyone my name's Tony I live in Northland Kaikohe Northland so about four hours north of Auckland if you don't know where that is quite rural um, I've been in the business for four years and be my 50 in September. Um, and what else? Um, I'm going to share a little bit around there's a few things and I'll try not to like talk everyone's ear off, but the first part is a bit around goal setting. The second part is around accountability. So, uh, in terms of goal setting, um, 
I used to be quite flimsy when I set my goals. Like I'd have a goal, but it wasn't very specific. It, as Bridget said, it wasn't broken down as to the how, um, and there wasn't a time frame. And I used to do that purposely because then I thought if I didn't reach it, then I could just push the goal post out and not feel bad about it. But actually, um, you do. I've discovered over these years, you really do need to be specific. Otherwise, you don't really hold yourself to account. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was going for, I was SC, I was going for QSSC and I was on a training with Adam. And if you know Adam, he spotlights you and he holds you to account. He'll make you do a public declaration. And he sort of said, oh, what's your next promotion? And I was like, QSSC. And then he said, what, um, when are you going to achieve that by? And I said, oh, probably the next couple of months. And he was like, no, that's not good enough. Um, he goes, I want, and I was on a Zoom, so it's kind of like a fishbowl situation because everyone's staring at me. And he's like, I want you to publicly declare that you're going to hit QSCC this month. And I was like, that freaked me out because I thought that gives me a time limit. And it was that month. He wanted it to be done by the end of that month. Uh, I think it was April at the time. And I sort of sarcastically said, oh, yeah, I laughed and said, I'm going to be curious. He said, at the end of the month, he goes, I don't believe you. I want you to say it again. And I was panicking. So anyway, I had my team in Masha who just turned, hit SP. She was listening to it too. She's been spotlighted before. And so I just said, I'm going to be QSCC this month. But I was so scared because he'd made me say it in front of everyone. And then I was like, I have to do this. So, so between myself and Mata, we single-handedly got myself to QSCC. I had a few other team, but they weren't as active. But I literally, because of the panic after he made me set the time frame, I was profuse, profusely messaging people through that training. I actually got six confirmed orders in that one training because of how scared I was. Tell, don't, don't know if it was motivation. I don't know. But I got there in the end. I got into the next following month and he said, I heard you got to QECC and I was just like, yeah, I did. So I guess the point of that story is not so much to put, you know, overwhelming pressure on yourself, but I think if we don't put timeframes on things, we tend to be like, okay, if I don't get it, I'll just slip through the next month. If I don't get it this month, I'll slip through the next month. So it's about, I guess, some accountability, but also, um, I think it gives you a bit more drive if you you know specifically what you're going for, when and the how. So what I always encourage my team to do, and I do myself every month, so we set short-term goal for, or goals for the month, and then we have our long-term goals. And um, my team's kind of in a transition at the moment where I've got some that are quite stagnant and have fallen off the face of the earth and others that are new or others that are still wanting this. So... I've kind of brought it back to basics and we do a short-term goal for the month and then we do a, um, a long-term goal. So my long-term goal, and I've put it on my phone as a screensaver, I've got a funny story about that, is to be SEC by Duke Conference um, in June. And I've put that on my screensaver. It's a picture of me and my partner and I've put that on my screensaver. Now, um, if, you're in a, if you're not really into manifestation, trust me, it is a thing. I never was until I joined the business. Um, put it somewhere where you can see it. Try not to put it in a book because it's easy to shut the book. Have it on post-it notes. I don't know, whatever your jam is. Like I know with um, Tammy's team, they put post-it notes around. I have alarms on my phone. I also have my screensaver. I actually manifested the caramel protein by putting that on my screensaver and everyone laughs about it. But I'll tell you, I manifested the shit out of that protein and I won it. Uh, um, so I literally, you won't see it, but I've got here on my screensaver, I'll be ECC uh, by conference June 2024, because I know I'll see it. If I put it in a book, I'm not going to see it. Some examples of my alarms I have are I'm going to qualify for April. I will cre create $4,000 a month by December 2024. Um, I've ever got my team's goals in here. Must have qualified April. I will sign up for a new team in April. So and so on and so forth. Um, some have also got affirmations. It's really important to remind yourself of your strengths. So put affirmations in there too. But I intentionally set alarms, and my mentor Pauline, who is on the training, taught me how to do it, and that suits me down to the ground because I did qualify last month. So it went from I will qualify in March. You, you level up your goal, I will qualify in April. If you've got a goal in there to be Partner Plus this month or you're going for Senior Partner, uh, just to say some of you on here are Partner Plus, set an alarm that says I'm going to be SP this month or SP in April or whatever it is. Be really clear about it, but then go that step further and if you need help from your um, upline, as Bridget said, um, 
game plan and map it out. What does that look like for you? She's covered that really well already, but if you're going for Partner Plus SP, how many orders would that be? Do you need a team? Yes, you do. Senior partner requires one team. You order order underneath them. Just, yeah, really be clear on it because I think it's easy to set the goal, but then if you don't know the how, then it's really easy not to achieve it because you're not, you need to play smart. You need to, with anything, you know, especially, you know, being parents, when we're planning things out for our kids, we're really meticulous on that. So you need to do the same. <laughs> yeah, alarms. When my alarms first went, used to go off, <laughs> my partner's like, hey, why is your phone going off all the time? And I was like, oh, it's just my alarms. So now when they go off, he doesn't bat an eyelid. He's just like, oh, yeah, it's her, her affirmation alarms <laughs> or her goal alarms alarms it's yeah so I right, that kind of ties in already with what Bridget has told you so another thing is if you're a visual person have a vision board but that's why I have on my phone some of us use Canva or whatever to you know have a visual um so I hope that makes sense all right I'm just going to jump in the chat because I don't know if I've missed anything but yeah if an alarm doesn't work for you find something that works for you but the reason I really like alarms is because when you achieve that goal, you can level up the goal. And when you're changing the month or the promotion or whatever, it's a really, really good feeling. So that's why I encourage you to do that. So that's goal setting. I feel like that's quite self-explanatory and just tagging on to what Bridget said already. But if you really, if you need the help in game planning and mapping it out, speak to your upline because that's what we're there for, to help you. Um, in terms of accountability, there's a few things. And also um, some of it, we kind of harp on about some of the same things, but it's necessary. Um, and how can I compare it to, I um, have a big passion for netball and I'm a coach and an umpire. And so it doesn't matter what the age group is, you'll find it's the same stuff. <laughs> you need to go through all the teams, the stepping, the contact, the obstruction. It just goes through all the age groups. Obviously, if they're younger, it'll be more, it'll repeat itself more. But the way I look at it is um, these things to keep yourself accountable have to be done all the time. So I have no shame in repeating, following up on people, customer care. But I will... No, I won't beat that into my team. That's the wrong words. But I'll drum that into my team till the cows come home because they need to understand it. And often it's where all of us slip, even the ones that are in leadership. So in terms of accountability, I mean looking after your team. Now, as we all know, if you're brand new, you may not have team yet. But for those of us who are a bit more seasoned, we understand that people will come and go. Some will come for community, some will come because they love the idea to start with and they won't stay. They'll join, they won't do anything. They'll join in order, but they don't go any further. There's people that come for different reasons and different seasons in your business. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I learned um, quite early on in my business that you can't expect things from people if they don't expect it for themselves or they don't really know what it is they want or what their why is but what I would say to you is keep the door open no matter how active or inactive they are um, you're still their mentor so even if they're not showing up just every now and then check in with them and see how they're going um, you know things can change sometimes they won't ever do anything and that's fine but what I'm trying to say is um, to invest your energy to all of your team, but be methodical and be intentional about it. Obviously, if there's someone that's not really doing the work or really interested in getting further, you're not going to invest all your energy into them, but you still need to hold the door open. So that's what I mean about looking after your team. In terms of customer care, for me, that's a no-brainer, but I've seen plenty of people fly through, get customers, get promotions, and then all of a sudden a huge drop in their pay line. Now, some people are just going to join as a one-off. You're going to get people that will come and go. You get people that won't join at all. But again, the same as your team, you need to look after your customers. Majority of mine are people that I know, friends and family. So I always have that connection with them regardless. So for me, customer service is easy because you have that connection already. But um, if you don't create the connection, um, if they were only a once off uh, every now and then, I'll tell you the same thing. You've got to keep the connection with your customers because they know that they'll either come back to you. They, they know that you care and you're not just about the order. Um, I think it's just really obvious because if you're not providing that customer care, it might be a little appreciation. It might be just messaging now and again, might be asking how the capture is going, making sure they're consistently taking them, increasing their water intake. There's a number of things that you can do for customer care. 
But if you're not going to get into the habit of doing that, this is where the declines can come in. This is where they won't come back to you because they were just a quick sale. Like for me, this makes sense, but I do have to bring this in to my team every now and then and remind them to appreciate their customers and check in on them. And that can be the difference between someone ordering again or not. So that's what I mean by that. Also connecting into customer care. Now, again, if you're brand new, this isn't relevant, but if you are starting to get a bit of a you know customer base and team, it's tracking your declines. Now, I'm not going to cover this tonight because it's another, another thing altogether, but if you're not aware, you can um, run reports through your virtual office, and that's how we can check to see where the declines are sitting amongst our own customers or in our team. So I don't wait till the end of the month to do the reports. I'll look through it several times in the month. If I can see declines amongst my team, I'll send a quiet message to that teamy and say such and such as order has declined. Could you please follow up with them? Um, and I'll do that for any of my own. Um, right now, this may not make sense, but if you and don't have a huge customer base or team, please take note of it now because it will become important as you grow your uh, business that it is part of customer care. It is about tracking your numbers. Again, I sort of compare it to when you're um, mapping out your goal. It's all part and parcel. You need to be tr tracking to see because this will affect your pay line at some point. If this is completely foreign, I apologize. So I was going to share my screen about how to to generate a report, but I won't do that tonight. That's probably another another thing for another night. Um, showing up in your business. Now, I don't mean spewing just plus on everyone every day, all day. <laughs> showing up just means, um, what does it mean? For me, it might be sharing quote. I love quotes. Quotes are my thing. And I see some really, some of our leaders even here have a really beautiful method where they um, have beautiful templates with their quotes in their name. I just, at the moment, tend to share other people's ones. I've gone on Pinterest. If you're a quote person, like that's my jam, I just think that a lesson or inspiration is really cool, whether people are customers or in the business or not. So uh, just Pinterest has some really beautiful content. So I've started to save an album there, but I like to post quotes in my stories, sometimes um, post it on my wall. Um, I mix it up. So I'll share stuff that's happening in my life that I'm excited about. I'll share stuff about the business, whether it's something challenging, something exciting. I'll share products. That, so mix it up. It doesn't, some people will consistently um, post in their stories and take any product. I think that's quite cool because it shows that you're living the mission every day. But do what suits you. You don't, it's, it's really easy to compare and see people put out beautiful reels and you know, polls and you think, oh, why didn't I think of that? In this business, the good part is everyone likes to share. There's no point recreating. We often share each other's ideas and content, but show up in some way um, because people take pain attention. Even if they kind of say, no, I don't, that doesn't interest me, or it's normally a no, not right now. If they see you're consistent in your business, they're going to feel like, okay, this isn't just the phase that he or she's going through. This is, part of the everyday, sharing your lessons about your business, whether there be obstacles or something really cool, whether it be um, a leader you got to meet or new friends, side buddies that you get to meet at, a, at the, um, you know, events, like when I went to the NMZ Mindset with Bridget in Auckland, I got to personally meet Mish and Ramona, and that was cool. And now we're going to do a local event with Tammy. So um, just share all parts. I'm not saying, like, you yeah, know, you do laundry. <laughs> Some people are real, share real personal and that's okay. But find what resonates with you. Find what is genuinely you. You don't have to try and duplicate someone else's story and content because you have your own story. And I used to think I didn't have one. And, oh, gosh, my, my mentor, Pauline, will tell you I've, I've been a bit of a um, bit of hard work. But I got there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Four years down the track. But, yeah, absolutely be visible. That's what I mean. Just be visible so people can see you and be genuine. So just be yourself. Uh, what else? Follow-ups. Now, follow-ups is my favorite, and I'll just say this to I'm blue in the face. Another thing for you to learn if you're new, fortune is in the follow-up. If you've never been on Adam's training, that is his one of his key quotes. If you don't know this, it takes five-plus follow-ups statistically for people to say yes People get busy, people keep you on scene, they forget, life happens, it's too expensive, whatever the thing is, fortune is in the follow-up. Now, I don't mean like 
pound them every day. Are you going to order? Are you going to order? I had this tea me once. She didn't last very long, but she was very blunt. And I said, no, we don't ask like that. <laughs> you get to teach her how to kindly ask people. But it's not even about spamming them every day. It could be just, hey, how are you going? It could be you see something's going on in their life and they've posted and you you react to it or you comment. It, when I say follow up, it doesn't mean you're harassing them because that's not what it's about. We're about creating pure curiosity. We're about helping to support a health or a wealth need or a community need, whatever that is. Follow up can look like a number of things. It's not necessarily just business and product it can be frustrating you can sometimes do those follow-ups and they'll still say no or nothing happens but it is honestly worth it I think when I was brand new the amount of people I didn't follow up on and honestly I lost so many opportunities but when I well and truly understood the concept of fortune is in the follow-up that's where the magic happens so um fortune is in the follow-up and you'll probably hear me say this some other time during the year <laughs> and I'm not sorry about it <laughs> Um, that's kind of it. Oh, I just wanted to touch on a little bit about the 60, um, events in 60 days, so much gold and what Bridget has shared already, but the 60 events in 60 days, it can be on online. It doesn't have to be a live event, but as someone has already touched on the live events, just so it's just a different feeling. Like when I went to uh, the NMD mindset, tour in Auckland and Katrina put Ramona if you've not had the chance to meet her she's from Kaitaia it's a beautiful wahine tour or strong woman and she was put on the spot literally to share her story and um oh my gosh she did such an amazing job but she shared quite a bit about you know being in a domestic violence situation about her children who have different um you know medical and, or diagnosed with things and it was just so it's not, it wasn't scripted. It was just her story. And I'm not saying people ever script, but you know how people really plan things out. I am one of those things, people that will write something because, yeah, I'm quite meticulous in how I write and share things, depending on what it is. But she just shared her story and to be sitting in the room with her, try it. And I, did, I, I was good. I didn't cry. But oh, honestly, everyone just felt, felt her, felt how genuine she was about how um, transparent she was about her journey. So um, absolutely, if you want to do an, an online event maybe you could change it up and do both because I think we may do that too but I'm actually quite excited because myself Ramona who I just spoke about um Tammy and Mish we've organized an event for next week so where I am I actually live close to the prison because I used to work for correction so we've got the most northern prison here but opposite is a new place called the innovation center and it's like two-story education there's a program there for Kainga Auto Home so prisoners that are on um uh, work to release, uh, make building the houses. There's a beautiful conference room, but we found our space to do an event and they actually have a lab there. They make local products, um, not supplements, but in the prison we've got our beehives that produce some manuka honey and there's like all of these skincare products, the lab there where they've created with manuka honey, kawakawa leaves like balms and ointments and stuff like that. And the space is beautiful and they make it really cost effective for people to run events there. So that's actually where we're doing, running our events and I've been to a few spaces here for a correction. So it's really exciting. So what I'm trying to get at is, Find out who's in your local area who might already be doing events. You'll see in the chat that Pauline's doing um, event involved in a few events in Auckland and Hamilton. But um, talk to your upline. There's an events chat. Uh, pop it in the Team Love Vibe chat and find out if there's something you can hook into. If you're not quite confident at maybe sharing personally, go along. Take notes so that you'll be able to jump onto the next one. Um, uh, I'll be honest, like I just didn't want to do any live events at all I'd rather just sit behind the laptop or the phone but I was like you know what it's been four years girlfriend you got to level it up so I was like you get to a point and I'm sorry if I'm rambling but you'll get to a point like I'm four years in five years in September there's stuff that I've known since the beginning of time but you'll sometimes find it's not for a few years down the track it starts to click now don't tell me why but as of last week my self-belief increased um and then I was like, hang on, hang on. The stuff they've been telling me, it's clicking into my head. I'm like, I've just got to go do this live event. I've got three other beautiful women that are going to do it with me. Like, seriously, what what do we have to lose? We really, really don't. But to get people in a room with you, um, 
and really connects pe with people on a personal level. In Māori, we say kanohi to kanohi, which is face-to-face. -face. You just can't beat that. And while this business is beautiful in terms of technology allowing us to connect with people all over New Zealand and different countries, there is nothing quite like being in a room full of women and men, if there's any there, whether it's your side buddies, your leaders, or potential women or men that are going to join you on this journey. So I feel like I've waffled on and I was going to share a video, but I'm not going to now. I'm just going to give you the rest of your evening back and hope some of it was helpful to you all. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. That was awesome, Tony. Um, I just wanted to, I don't know if you can probably pop in the chat just quickly, you know, like how new are you if you're really new and if you would just like just my, some of my quick tips around what I do for customer care before we go and maybe follow up. Um, just since we talked so much about the importance of it, I just, if that would help anybody, then I'm happy to share. If you guys are all like sorted with that, then it's all good. Um, totally fine, Tony. You can talk about it if you like. Um, okay, cool. So for me, I find customers are definitely easier to keep than they are to fight, well, to find new ones that's always the say no and it, I definitely do notice if I have been a bit slack with my customer care things will change um so for me it's really really important obviously in the beginning to find out why they're here uh whenever someone joins the the um you know joins me as a customer I always firstly send them an email thanking them um telling them how to take the products and I have a little job form that they fill out that is a questionnaire that's going to ask them what their goals are and all that and that goes directly to my email if they've got some super cool goals then I'm like cool let's get on a chat let's talk about it I want them to be you know so I can find out how accountable they need to be and all these things Paul Rach did this and one lady said I want you to call me every day so just be make sure you have like <laughs> like I uh, like do you want me to contact you once a week once a month <laughs> once every three months give them some options um and so that's just really, you know, because the, the most important thing is we want everyone to have a really, really good experience. So they say customers know. And even then, if they, for some reason, they do tend to get off. If that, if that happens, then they're going to come back because they've had a great experience. The other thing I do is, which is a really cool thing, actually, I didn't share now because we've got all these this shake um, opportunity that you can buy these shakes to send out samples as I send out a little thank you card that I just got on Vistaprint that says thank you and it has my name on the back and I write a little thank you and I send them a shake sample if they hadn't, haven't ordered shakes and a little recipe card that might tell them how to make um, chocolate mousse with their shake or one of the recipes from our program so that's what I do to all my new customers um, and then obviously add them into whatever program they're going to be added into and I find that my customers come back, like I've had customers go on and come off and go on and come off. And I could consistently, if I'm, you know, if I'm on and I'm doing the work, I can bring on 10, 12 customers a month. And some, not all of those are brand new customers. Some of them are customers that might have dropped off and then come back because like Tony said, I keep that relationship only open, like just because they've not a customer of mine anymore. I keep that relationship open. We're still mates. I'm still checking in on how they are, how they're going with their health goals. And um, Alex is really good at this as well. And so that's um, my top tips for customer care. And then just with follow-ups, like Tony said, it, it, follow-ups is like my favorite thing in the world. I just, that's what I do first every day from my demo is follow-ups, <laughs> always following up. So my first one, when I send someone a message, the most important thing, I'm going to be really quick so I know it's very really nice. But when you've sent someone some information, if it's a business or if it is a product video, set up the follow-up because then that sets you up. It's like being professional. It's like, here you go. Check out um, whatever you have sent them. Love to know your thoughts. I'll touch base with you um, today. Uh, when are you going to do it? Like tomorrow or the next day or give them a time that you're going to touch base. So they're expecting you to get back to them. So then all you're doing when you get back to them is you're being a professional. Hey, how are you going? Um, love to know what you love best about the info I sent through the other day. That's what my first follow-up always is. If they don't reply, which and they don't because <laughs> they haven't watched it yet, it's, hey, how are you going? Love to catch you for a quick chat and answer any questions you may have um, regarding, if they're, you know, creating extra income or uplifting your health if they're a customer or a team member. 
So that's always my second message. If they haven't seen that and they haven't responded to that, <laughs> hey, how are you going? I've got some time on this day or this day. Would any of those suit you for a quick chat? And then if they haven't seen that or they don't respond, hey, how are you going? Hope you're having a great week. Just wondering if you saw my last few messages. <laughs> Sounds really simple, but often like you'll send that and they've seen it and then they're like, oh man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been so busy. And they see it. If they still don't see that or they've seen it and they still don't reply, I'm going to be like, hey, how you going? I know we were talking the other day about you wanting to do this, this or this, whatever it is, the business or the products or what they want to achieve. Uh, just wondering if that's still important to you. If they still don't reply to you. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Just wondering if I've done anything to offend you. Is everything okay? That always gets a reply. <laughs> you send that, then everyone's like, no, no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You haven't done anything wrong. I've just been really busy. So don't get attached to the outcome. They've seen my message, but they're not, they haven't replied. Or um, I asked my team, have you followed up? Yeah, I followed up with them last week, but they haven't got back to me. <laughs> I follow up with everyone every day or every second day if I'm in a conversation with that person around the product, like a current conversation or the business. And then maybe it slows down and it tapers out and then, you, and then you're just touching base. But like Tony said, don't be afraid of follow-up. You've set up the follow-up. You're doing exactly what you said. You run a business. You're being professional. So, sorry, I mean, unless, bit... <laughs> unless you around and straight out say no. Of course. You, you know, you can say no then you say okay thank you very much yeah but you know they still watch you even if they say no so like um yeah most people as Bridget say that like if you do send the message hope I've offended you or whatever sometimes I like to send the voice message because it gives a bit more personal touch quite often as Bridget said they will get back to you but very rarely will someone tell you to rack off or be like no (laughs) like they generally forgot something's come up like yeah there's all sorts of reasons so so yeah so I hope that helps um, and really excited for you guys to hear what you guys plan for your next few months leading up to conference and how you worked it out and maybe you can share with some of us next week what you've got going. For new customers, do you try and make conversation or get straight to talking to their products? Is that for um, finding a new customer? I'm not going to even attempt to say your name because, yep. Okay, cool. So I'll just share one. I did actually have that written down. So how um, you know how Tony shared just quickly about maybe creating a cool quote or um, maybe a post. That's what we call an interaction post. That's a great way to start conversations. So it doesn't necessarily have to be around the business or the product to start a conversation. You might be like, put up a cool quote and everybody that comments on it, you're going to reply to them or you're going to like it. And all that's doing is that's helping the algorithm tell Facebook or Instagram to show that person more of your stuff. So then when you do post in your stories around the products or you do post around that, then they're going to see that. And also you might they might comment on that post and you might flick them a private message and just start a conversation like, hey, how you going? What are you up to? Don't get attached to an outcome or get attached to the where it's going. It's more like take an interest in that person's life, asking the right questions. You know, if you ask someone how they're going, they're naturally going to ask, how are you going? If you're new, you can be like, yeah, I'm great. You know, like you can be like, what are you doing these days? Well, you know, I'm doing what I've always done. But at the moment, I've just started this new business. I'm super excited about it. I'm helping people with health and wellness. You know, how about you? Like just share little tidbits of what you're doing. But I would um, encourage you to share your and share your journey. And if people start commenting on posting a little story about, you taking the products or you making a recipe or something like that, then that's a great way to start a conversation too. I hope that helps. That was, I don't know if that was very clear. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Yay. Have a great night, guys. Hope you guys can get on training later on. If not, let's catch the recording. Cool. Bye, everybody. Thanks, heaps, ladies. See ya. Bye. Thanks.